The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, you know, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Hey, Good. Hey, uh, how you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding, and so is the Primal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. Would not be without it. Call now, toll free at one eight seven seven. 927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now your hosts nico dehan and paige clark good morning i'm nico dehan welcome to living a primal lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced natural and wild world that's right nico to recover our natural health and regain our rights and our freedoms and i am paige clark that's a beautiful morning in downtown clearwater 77 degrees kind, kind of, of muggy Kind of beautiful, yeah. Well, we survived really the storm. Seen the, we, we have not really seen the sun. It's been, it was a great hunker in Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, we sure did inside, uh, watching a little sports and watching some movies and, yeah, watching those bands come through. But uh, we really uh, skated it again. I know. guess we are. Florida, I mean, it, this type Tampa of. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay area is protected somehow because we were in that cone almost, you know, that little area where there was nothing happening, a little wind. Once in a while, a band would come through. But I we think. We should knock on wood. Oh, there we there's go. some real wood over there. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, and, and uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call us or sure. to email us. And you can reach us today at 877-927-6648. Yeah, and you can always reach us after hours at uh, tfnn.com, Nico or Paige at tfnn.com. And, of course, we're taking your phone calls. Yes. I like this uh, subject that um, you put in our, in our plan today, how to be happy and why health is essential in the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, this is something that our ancient ancestors seemed to know. Uh, they just kind of uh, accepted everything. They had the food that was really awesome because it was out there and was wild. They, all they had to do was go get it. That and, might have been the challenge, but... Well, that was the work. Right. The work was really uh, pursuing your food and keeping uh, things uh, copacetic at home. I really feel, Nico, that the most important thing that I've learned mm -hmm or the things that I've had to unlearn. Yeah, because our modern society is pounding us into it, and you have to kind of just step back from that. And that's really what we want to talk about today, because if you're spending all day in the office, you're working hard uh, maybe to afford a new car or a bigger house, your friends and family even compliment you on your new furniture and the latest gadgets that you've bought. This sounds like something that is going on today, but something might be missing, and that missing might be the happiness that we're talking about. That's exactly right. and. Um you yeah. know, there's nothing wrong with making money. I mean, it is a currency. It mm -hmm. makes things go round. It makes yeah. things work, for yeah. sure. And uh, we're all a fan of becoming financially independent and not having the stress that comes with money troubles. However, you should That's never sure. equate the pursuit of money with achieving happiness. Uh, this can be a big mistake. And there's so many people that keep feeling that accumulating more material possessions will make them more happy. Just yeah, as so. and I think we get this from the TV, from uh, uh, the buying type of uh, economy that we have. Our economy has to keep selling stuff, and we have to keep buying stuff, even if we don't need it, because that's the way our economy is shaped. If people stop buying, if we only bought what we needed, the economy, economy would fail and we'd be in dire straits here. Maybe we'd ha be happier after the fall, uh, and I believe we probably would be, but I think that uh, this pursuit, this constant pursuit, and of course we have a lot of people who aren't even up to snuff as far as being financially at least getting by. Well, when you look at some of the statistics of, of the lack of long-term savings that many of us have or don't have, mm -hmm. or these kind of a things, or the amount of uh, funds for emergencies, it can be quite concerning. And so many people just implicitly assume that accumulating more material possessions are what are going to make them happy. And yet the behavior in modern society directly tells us that they believe that income and possessions equal happiness. Yeah. And this is so sad. This is so discerning, uh, uh, concerning to my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel this. I feel this. And, um, you know, let's take a look, Nico. Maybe you can show this picture. Uh, let's take a look at the most expensive possessions that most people have. It's, it's, it's usually their home. 
And in 2013, the average U.S. house was 1,000 feet larger than it was in 1973. Hmm. Oh. And during this same period, Americans doubled their individual living space. So it seems that we've, we, you know, but let's take a look at it. Is the big house the dream house or the nightmare house? Yeah, you know, uh, Ellen and I go for these walks on Sunday morning, even though this Sunday we didn't because of the rain and everything. We go past a couple of these mansions in our neighborhood, and there's one being built now. It must be maybe 4,500 or 5,000 square feet, you know, three stories, sitting up right on the bay. Uh, and I look at it, I said, man, if I had that house, I'd be, I'd be cleaning that thing all the time. I mean, there's no, nothing else to do but keep that thing clean. So in other words, if you have that, you need a lot of money to keep it clean. You need people. Well, it's true. I think maybe sometimes we have to, to look at, are these beasts of burden, you know, perhaps? Oh, yeah. And, I, and on the other side, you know, we've seen this tiny house movement mm -hmm. or the more simple life or the paring down we're seeing a lot of the smaller spaces becoming in vogue too. So I see mm -hmm. some counterbalance to this, but let's go on. You know, what's the most often used drug in our society? Uh, it's, uh, is it cigarettes, alcohol? No, yeah. it's te the television. The television. The Ooh, television. Yeah. Tell well. a lie vision. <laughs> That's all it can do, and, right? And, you know, as it later turns out, television does not add to your happiness that it mauled dirt. You know, it's, it's another way to anesthetize, to distract, and, um, it was actually during the Cold War that the famous mathematician Paul <laughs> yeah. Erdos joked that television is something the Russians invented to destroy American education. Education, yeah. Well, wow. so there's some truth in that, but not the that? Russian part. How do you pronounce that, Paul Erdos? Erdos. Erdos, with that little... With a little thing, thing on top, accent a double mm -hmm. goo or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, the more time uh, you spend uh, in front of the TV, of course, the more you're going to be enslaved as a consumer yeah, for Yeah, let's talk all about some things. of these points of what happens when you become an addict to television. It makes you more prone to accept messages uncritically. I think that is so true. Yeah. It yeah. is a form of programming, mm -hmm. programming the mind. Right. And in other words, you're more likely to succumb to arguments of authority. Television also lowers your critical thinking skills skills. I agree with that. I um, <laughs> if you only knew how much that is debated. Well, it's in not my only own. seven. You know, when I think of television, I also think of the iPad and Facebook and all these other things, because the second thing on here, it enslaves you as a consumer for mass marketing goods. Many goods you do not need. Most goods you do not need. So, and television is one of the uh, avenues where most of the mass marketed goods occurs. But now and Facebook you're exactly, is... Well, you're exactly right, Facebook and... Well, remember and, what Facebook is doing now. It's taking all your information and giving it to other people well, that's who they, are selling things and skewing it exactly to your demographic. Oh, yeah, and that's why sometimes you see the ads and you're that's like... That's why you always hey, see the ads. I just bought that. Right. And they're still giving it to you. I they, spend a lot of... I spend more time uh, instead of on Facebook. I like YouTube. And mm -hmm. um, I've got the ones without the commercials, so, mm -hmm. and, you know, it doesn't bother me as much. Mm -hmm. But... Um, it really is addictive, and it's drug-like, and, and I do believe, and I, I tell people, I believe there's a lot of programming and frequency medicine that's going on. Yeah. Other than the pharmaceutical medicine that's on every other commercial, I think there actually is frequency medicine. They're sending frequencies that are having an impact on yeah, you. Yeah, probably know? true. Anyway, we're going, going on a break here, so uh, yeah, that's a pretty house, but it's not something I want. I, I want my simple 1,400 square foot house, and that's enough for my wife and I. There you go. We'll be right back, folks. Stick around. Please pick up our Primal Edge, and of course, our House Signals newsletter. Got a new one coming out next Tuesday, so we'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Nico and Paige take your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And we're back, and we were talking about TV uh, ruining your life, and uh, it's as addictive and drug-like. Don't yeah. believe me? In 2010, the average American watched four uh, to five hours of television every day. That's more than a third of a 40-hour long week of time. And, and, you know, this is true. It tends to open you up to oversimplification of, our, of arguments. That there's a lot of Yeah, there's a lot of, well, and again, the idea of the repeating or right. just or You're repeating getting a some, message some across. Some authority uh, figure, perhaps, or, that we think is because they're on TV, they're automatically authority. That's oh, that kind just of the way that the brain burns works. me up when a lot of people be like, well, that's what we saw in the news, so it's got to be true. And I, I, yeah, and they, they and have I had the complete opposite opinion. I feel like if it's on the news, I'm going to question it. Yeah, well, there's no doubt. And you look at these broadcasters like uh, Fox and MSNBC and CNN. CNN. They have these guys on that are there every half hour poking mm -hmm. up their nose. And they're supposed to be the experts. And they're really uh, just journalists. That's right. So We've got some people in the chat room making the comment, too. There's, uh, you know, much misleading going on, yep. says Z. Yep, exactly. The other thing is it uh, makes you fat and ruins your sleep and that's you because of the blue and the green light well we've been talking about that uh, quite a bit and we'll continue to this uh, exposure to this artificial light was not how we were designed right and of course, uh, interferes with you know crucial hormones to keep us healthy yeah of course for years and years from the 1950s on we've had this one little screen in our house and then I think in the 70s or 80s maybe you got that second or third TV and then you moved it into the bedroom everything's working good and then all of a sudden the 90s come and now we have the computers coming and then in 2000 then we start getting the iPhones we, and the we're iPads, all looking at a screen and now we've got screens everywhere if you're not looking at the TV you're probably looking at the TV and your iPad and your phone is right beside you it's very true. <laughs> it's it's kind very of a silly true. thing, but I find myself doing this, well, too. Well, of course, and we know that this is an issue, but we're so absorbed with information and uh, uh, or distraction, yeah. uh, truly. So and since since the last decade, the social media usage, as an example, has completely exploded, and it's really another common addiction, uh, yeah. probably worse than the TV, to be quite frank. Mm -hmm. And we're spending two hours each day on social media, maybe more, and it's probably higher 
in some of the developed countries, so. and yet not spending time on social media can improve happiness. You know, you mentioned the comment that you've taken kind of a sabbatical from yeah, social media. Yeah, I haven't media. really done anything with it. I still post a show on there, uh, but I don't look at the birthdays. I don't look at anybody's comments anymore. Or what, ca what caramel macchiato they're drinking at the N corner Starbucks. Nothing at all. Yeah. And uh, it says right here that this will make you healthier and happier, and it certainly has taken the stress off. I don't you know, I find myself still going towards it because I haven't even eliminated it from the face, uh, from the uh, the book, but I don't go to it anymore. So I, it's a big accomplishment for me. Uh, that's all I can say about it. It's, it's just mm -hmm. puts a little less stress, gives me a little bit more time to do other things. So I'm finding my way around this. I, I de definitely want to eliminate it from my life, even the Twitter and the other ones, too. It's just. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, again, I think that all of these things take up so much valuable time. And I was thinking about this in the shower because I knew, you know, I'd seen this in, well, the, in the feed. Let me just say, okay. you know, I realized. And I'm maybe I'm being I am I absorb a lot. I read it like yeah. a newspaper. Oh, I do too. Yeah. I do too. I read it like a newspaper. I flip through it. I read headlines. I do these kind of things. I'm not so big of a poster. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a oh yeah that that's good. But what I'm concerned about is even my own children. I see that their life revolves around their next creative post. In other words, oh let me take a picture. Let me take a selfie, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to put a cute thing on. I'm going to post it, and let's see how many likes I get. And I I. I like everything they do. I mean, I go because I stay connected with them, but I don't remember being that way when I was young. I didn't really care about whether or not what I said was seen and liked and made an impact. Well, the other thing is that I was going to bring up, it's so superficial. You realize yes, after a while saying. it's very superficial. It doesn't mean anything. It's well-intentioned, I would say, but it's superficial. It's kind of like the thing where the phone call, the phone ringing in the old days, you had to answer it because that's what we always did. And it's probably not important, but it's urgent because this is an urgent ring. Mm -hmm. So we have to answer it. So it's urgent, but there's no importance to it whatsoever. And it's the same thing with Facebook. We like it. It's uh, we see things and it turns us on. But really, it's a selling machine, just like TV is. It's made for uh, the people who are selling you things. Well, the handlers in this yes. world are actually the people at the top. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg did not create Facebook. That's a lie. His name is a made-up name. Zuckerberg means sugar mountain. Facebook mm -hmm. is the sugar mountain for profiteering. And the, and, and and you know he's just a figurehead from the people and they stole it from the guy who really did it but the real point is they're exactly they're using it as a as a way to gather information much like 23andMe yes there's some interesting things that they, they're all tools right right exactly there, but, there's but the point it's right very there. easy to be exploited. tools for them not for us right well and they're tools for us and that it keeps us connected and we get to connect with people I mean let's face it's it not it, really connections though but it's not true connections yes, like exactly. you said it's not yeah. heartfelt connections okay. yes. so the next thing then is drugs and uh, I, you know, this new social media thing is kind of like a drug. I mean, people are high on it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and but but let's take the real drugs, okay. like the recent opiate epidemic. This opiate epidemic is a health crisis, where many people become addicted to prescription painkillers and drugs like heroin. These drugs are used many times for recreational or, or skate purposes. Right. And uh, well, it's actually mostly a problem in the developed countries. Yes. But yeah. yet we're stealing it. Yeah. From the from the non companies. I think companies. sooner countries. or later it's going to spill over into uh, you know the uh, the poorer countries just like the oils did. Remember, we're getting rid of all our vegetable oils here because of how we're talking about on the show and other people. But in developed countries, that's all they use because these people who are bringing in the oils are selling it or giving it away to them just to get them addicted to them. So uh, these cooking oils. And are really this is bad. many of the times why many of these indigenous people who used to. Uh, proved to be extremely healthy. Now we're seeing not so much. That's right. What's happened to their health? Well, it's because yep. they've been infiltrated by our frank, our Franken foods. So in the U.S. alone, opiates kill 20 times as many people uh, as uh, died on 9/11 every year. So that's a lot of people. Most of uh, addicts, uh, addicts don't die because of the drug. Uh, they still have their lives, and those of their loved ones are ruined. So a lot of them don't die. They just ruin their lives, and I've seen that myself back in the 80s when a lot of my friends were doing coke. A lot of them got hooked on it. A couple of them died from it. And, uh, you know, now it's uh, more synthetic stuff going out. And, of course, the biggest problem we have in the United States right now with drugs is the uh, prescription drugs.
Well, and I think that that's the key point there. I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, but I think Tampa Bay really ranks high mm -hmm. on this um, abusive pill mill situation with these prescriptive drugs. And I, we want to preface this because you and I do talk about this, let's be quite frank. Um, you know, there are some places for uh, substances, usually from plant origins, mm -hmm. that can be used in a healthful way. You know, we've talked about ayahuasca or peyote. They can be used in a shamanic way to help with psychiatric disorders, addictions, mushrooms, psilocybin. These can be these can prove to be beneficial and improve no, no, no. the life. You know, marijuana or the or the anti-inflammatory benefits of CBDs. Yeah, remember all these things, the marijuana, the uh, ayahuasca and all, all these uh, mushroom types of things they were used by the savages. You know, this is a, you know this. So this was downplayed right away. These people are using their the medicine man is a witch doctor. Uh, so you know he's using superstition. So let's bring the medicine in, the real medicine, and let's kill this stuff. That's the way we thought when we were coming here. So here we go, though. You know, there's many addictions, and, and quite frankly, we you know we know that there's addictions to the TV, to the social media, now to substances. And are the substances just drug? No, they extend beyond that. We'll get back into this and what why focusing on your health can improve your happiness. Don't go away. That's right. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-418. 8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com let him know you heard him on tfnn and save up to 100 dollars on a special package just for tfnn listeners act today Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
welcome back. We're talking about health and happiness and why are so many people addicted? And as we said, the addictions go beyond drugs. It's uh, lifestyle things, it's social media, it's television. What's missing? Something must be missing and what's a clue to the solution? Because all of these previous activities are replacing our precious time that we used to spend outdoors. Yeah, we're moving farther and farther away from nature. On weekends, we spend maybe one hour each day out, out, outdoors. During the weekends, the number increases to almost two hours. Hey, I want to make a real quick comment. You know, this article, by the way, that we're kind of using to kind of guide our conversation today comes to us from a very prolific writer. I've, I've followed a lot of his new stuff, and it's called NatureBuildsHealth.com. NatureBuildsHealth.com. And he, 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 when he builds his articles, he has a lot of sites. Mm -hmm. research to point out you know he's footnoted quite a bit in this article I just wanted to interject that yeah before civilization however humans spend all their time outside all their daytime outside at least I don't like this term civilization because I think it's the wrong term it makes us think that we're civil and I think our ancestors were more civil than we are certainly we're killing more people now so that's not civil I think it's domestication I think the domestication started about 10,000 years ago with the advent of the uh, domestication of animals and plants and, uh, of course, agriculture. And this way, we have slowly become domesticated also. And that's a better word. Domestication, I think, is, uh, is down the evolutional ladder instead of up the evolutionary ladder. Absolutely. And yet, you know, it's presented as if civilized people is an improvement. Right. But what I, I mean, I, I, God, I'm studying some really cool stuff about what's happened to our, our, our cranial facial structure and yeah. our jaw structure and the connection between our structure and our teeth, but that's exactly what happened. The introduction of soft foods and domestication has ruined us from a genetic potential. That's going to be the one of our shows. The other thing is, too, if you, if you look at the animals and the animals that we domesticated don't really survive well in the wild. And that's an indication of how healthy they are. They can't survive. Their brain isn't, uh, isn't uh, wild. So they don't know what their enemies are. They don't know which plants That's to right. eat, perhaps. They You're certainly right. don't know what plants to eat because they're forest-fed stuff that we wouldn't uh, eat. I know. We don't eat, actually. So, so anyway, let's go, go on. on. So yep. before civilization, humans spend all the daytime hours outdoors. And why does this matter? Because from this evolutionary perspective, we're still basically the same as we were back when we evolved out of Africa, all from a common mama. Yep. A common woman, by the way. Mm -hmm. And the difference between today's humans and human beings 250,000 years ago is pretty small from that evolutionary standpoint. But we were not meant to spend all this time indoors, folks. We're not meant to be separated from the sun. I call it the sun of God. Okay? Well, it is. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. The sun. Sadly enough, our environment is increasingly becoming unnatural, and the first civilization started moving us slowly indoors. It was in the 19th century. century. Electric artificial light was added, which allowed us to stay indoors. And right now, modern technology is changing our environment even more radically, and this is leading to serious health problems. These light frequencies are not healthy for our mitochondria. And our mitochondria are the energy producers of our cells. You know, when we lived in Africa in our natural environment, we felt great. And now we have addictions to make up for that loss of that growth, that feeling. We're, we're trying to replace it. It's like there's something missing. Yeah, we're trying to place it. And we're, we're looking replacing. for it in the wrong places. Well, not only that, we're, we're gathering all these possessions thinking this may be the one thing that would fulfill us. And oftentimes when we're really seeking out that one possession that uh, we're looking at it on uh, YouTube, we're looking at it on the newspaper, we see it on TV, we finally get it and it's working and then it starts not to exactly work the way we thought it would work. It's not exactly as presented. It's cool, but it's not as cool as we thought and there's disappointment. And this is kind of what happens in our society. Things don't last as long as they used to. Our air conditioners now last 10 years. They used to last 30. Why? Because we have to buy them. Yeah, exactly. But let's look at how health and happiness are actually what lead us to be successful, not the other way around. Healthy and happiness comes first, and success usually comes second. Look at that kitty cat. 
<laughs> this is happiness right there. And look folks. at that cat. That cat says, you're telling me I need Facebook and a big car to be happy? Nah. Nah. Doesn't even <laughs> need a bell around his neck. So let's talk about something. Dopamine makes you happy and successful. Dopamine mm -hmm. is one of our natural uh, neurochemicals, okay? And in this section, we're going to explore dopamine, and it's a signaling substance in your brain and helps the cells in your nervous system communicate. So your brain is part of that nervous system, and through this nervous system, dopamine influences your actions. So let's look and see what dopamine does to your body. On one hand, dopamine makes you feel happy, but on the other hand, dopamine also plays an essential role in making you successful. And that's true because see, different people have different levels of dopamine and we know from some of the genetic studies, again, genes don't control your destiny, but how you process them or the, the epigenetics, the right. above the gene things, there are some people that as a result can build up too much dopamine. They, they say that there's some studies that many people that are successful in the stock market um, have high dopamine levels. And uh, they're able to, th when it's really high, you can think and process and react very well, but you can get overstimulated by dopamine and cause anxiety and panic and If so you forth. have low dopamine levels, your brain does not have as much dopamine available or cannot use that dopamine effectively. If you have high dopamine levels, you have more dopamine available and you're using that dopamine better in your brain. So the lower the dopamine, the lower your happiness quotient, higher dopamine levels lead to higher happiness. But this is the cool thing. Where do we get our dopamine? Well, you're going to find out that the sun is crucial in helping you manufacture your own dopamine. And Nico and I have been sharing with you the importance of getting out and being an outsider and, and, and greeting that sun. Here comes the sun, as George Harrison said, and that early morning sun is when we actually create the rays and the frequencies in the sun that help us make our dopamine. And if you have a cat uh, like the one laying there and in the morning you have a nice picture window where the sun comes through, that's where that cat's going to be. It knows. That's right. So let's look at some of the links, Nico, that link between dopamine and success. So number one is dopamine intrinsically motivates you and it makes you feel rewarded after you successfully take certain actions. Yep. And by the way, again, research to support these. We'll have to throw this in the, in the next newsletter. Mm -hmm. uh, dopamine aids in analyzing the benefits and costs of any action that you take. Phrased differently, dopamine helps you figure out which action will give you the biggest reward for the lowest energy exertion on your part. And this is what human beings do. This is why we're successful, because we can do this. Mm -hmm. And dopamine actually helps you to cope with and deal with stress, pain, social irritations, and the loss of self-control. It makes you optimistic and confident. And, increase in, so when you have confidence, you're more likely to see an increase in both your income and your social relationships. Yeah, without dopamine, you'll turn into both a victim or a... A-hole. A hole. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it says, folks. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, this can cause, uh, you know, dopamine can cause you to act as if you're placed higher on the social ladder. That's interesting. Yeah. You, maybe you have a higher opinion of yourself. That's right. That could be it, good. Well, it makes you more optimistic and confident. So yeah. that's why. Low dopamine levels tend to make you feel anxious. So the other thing is dopamine improves your thinking and your ability to make more spontaneous and, and you become less risk averse. So that's where I mentioned there are actually some studies that, that the people that are in the financial world tend to have high dopamine. And uh, you tend to have a better memory when your dopamine levels are adequate, helping you with your learning High ability. dopamine levels become a self-fulfilling prophecy over time. Yeah, let's continue this conversation. We'll take a short break. Pick up some of our Primal Edge, our daily one-shot wonder. It's there to keep you ha healthy, happy, and wealthy. That's right. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge. Formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. SAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN. TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And so for, before the break, I mentioned that high dopamine levels become a self-fulfilling prophecy over time. Now, low dopamine levels, on the contrary, make you more prone to engage in self-destructive behavior. And this is really makes a lot of sense. When you look at our society today with all these kids shooting up, uh, people and stuff. I mean, you're thinking that their dopamine levels are very low. Well, and, and what do many of these kids have in common? They're often, uh, you know, latch key, spend a lot of screen time, have a lot of right. screen time. Usually on a drug or two. Yeah, a little anti. Well, again, it's a it's a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. And so these are some of the traits that you'll see in people with low dopamine levels. You'll seek dangerous novelties to compensate for your low dopamine levels. And this might be gambling, or you try new drugs, or unsafe sex and you're more likely to exhibit this addictive behavior for these things food porn etc yeah well, all these things you'll no longer adequately access the risks and rewards of different actions remember the dopamine is fundamentally concerned with risks and rewards you'll be more irrational in your life's planning that's a very interesting that when dopamine levels you might be you might seem to be more manic, so to That's speak, right. not really thinking you, things you know, out. You, uh, it gives you higher chances of getting social phobias and depression, mm -hmm. of course. And then we also see that many people, there's a correlation between obesity and low dopamine levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is evidence uh, cited in this article here of sexual dysfunction, particularly in males. Right. So with low dopamine levels, we also have difficulty focusing. I already sent this to a family member. They're sending me a smile. <laughs> um, you know, when you have low dopamine levels, you're going to have difficulty focus. I know this to be true at times in my life when I felt that my dopamine yep. levels were low. Yeah, you experience fatigue, lack, lack, uh, lack of motivation, procrastination, your memory is not as mm -hmm. good. Yeah. We want to work to keep our, our dopamine levels high and folks, the best solution for keeping your dopamine levels high is nature. Nature, sunshine and fresh air and salt water and grounding. In other words, if you have low dopamine levels, your brain will do anything to feel good. And that uh, gets you into the thing of drugs and gambling and other types of things that uh, will f make you feel great for little fleeting moments. And you'll always be chasing those little moments. I think that's there's a big, yeah, and I think that that's part of the attraction of, of nicotine smoking uh, 
smoking, I believe, nicotine, or I should say maybe it's not the nicotine. It could be one of the other 500 or so chemicals that are in commercial cigarettes, but they give people a dopamine hit. For me, the cigarettes, uh, the pull for cigarettes was strictly uh, peer pressure. When I was 17 years old, I succumbed to the pressure of all the boys in town smoking and laughing at me, not smoking. Ha ha, you're coughing, oh, you can't, you can't even take a drag, you're a dummy. That's what it was, you know, mm -hmm. and I said, okay, finally I'll smoke, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the peer pressure uh, that I was in high school. Me, I smoked. I was uh, um, a child of a family. My parents smoked, and I mean, yeah. I grew up in car trips with well, the car cool. windows. Well, it was cool. The 50s and 60s were, were cool to smoke. Well, the doctors medical doctors they all were, smoked. Yeah, that's right. they were all, you know, the commercials were, <laughs> yeah. I may not always smoke, but when well, I Johnny smoke, Carson I pull smoked. out a, I, I mean, you know, all these yeah, stars they, come on the Tonight Show and they're all Dean having, Martin. yeah, they were, you know, why not? Everybody looked at it. This guy's cool. He's making money. The cigarettes must be helping. I mean, that's the way the brain automatically thinks when we look at TV, mm -hmm. when we look at Facebook. That's what happens. Well, that's an example of another abuse of something, and, and that's really what it was. It became a vehicle for them to put a lot of chemicals that had drug-like effects on us that kept us craving more to make it commercially available. The truth is, many Native Americans passed the peace pipe and smoked tobacco without all the chemicals and lived right. very healthy lives oh, sure. yeah. and uh, perhaps did not really even hurt their lungs and so forth or their arteries. I think that really what's in what we've chosen to smoke is more likely the culprit. Well, certainly when the white man came, they didn't smoke the peace pipe much, so they certainly didn't have any drawbacks from the smoking. But, you so. know, we're gonna, just to get back with this, you know, you'll want to create high dopamine levels without resorting to long-term destructive behavior. And as we shared, uh, nature offers some very um, effective and very affordable options by just indulging in nature. So what you're saying a little bit is that we need to create new dopamine. We need that little fix of dopamine. And there are ways that we can get this without you know, actually getting rid of all these things that we just talked about and going back to nature. And, and this, is, but this is an interesting point, Nico. You know, if you behave destructively long enough, your entire dopamine reward system breaks down. And people who have broken down reward systems, they find that they no longer find pleasure in activities that would otherwise make them happy. And this is where so many of the times one of the key questions asked by physicians and prescribers is, are activities that used to bring you joy not doing it for you anymore? Mm, very well, interesting. Here, here's a script for that. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. And, um, you know, it might even be something as like a regular walk or a healthy meal. You know, they, they just don't do it for you anymore. Yeah, this makes me think of uh, stories like Scrooge, you know, with the Christmas. Mm -hmm. So here's an old man who's cranky. He's, his dopamine is maybe too high. It might be too low. I don't know. But he certainly is not uh, happy. But let's talk about, and I hinted at it at the beginning, and they covered here, there can be instances where your dopamine levels get too high. So what do right. we mean by that? Well, let's, you know, let's for, use, for example, if you are a cocaine user. In that instance, your dopamine levels shoot through the roof, altering their, your behavior. The resulting excessively high dopamine levels make, may make you more aggressive and impulsive. But nonetheless, this insatiable and unnatural high dopamine levels can only be accomplished through abuse again okay. again it's about balance and uh, it's you know it's very probable that high dopamine levels are problematic in themselves instead of unnaturally acquired extreme ho high dopamine levels are the problem an unnatural stimulation such as a drug like cocaine uh, the result is an imbalance and again same thing when we turn to nature uh, nature delivers her benefits in a balanced healthy way yeah so if you're looking for that real instant high like you get from uh, cocaine or maybe from marijuana or some other drug dopamine doesn't quite work that way it works in a nice steady progression uh, so it's not going to be that rush although there are times like during sex and things like that when you when you do get that rush mm -hmm. and there's sometimes when you connect with somebody you just look in their eyes and you get it that's right. And so the bottom line is you're going to want to keep your dopamine levels naturally high. And so how do we do that? Yep. Uh, pursuing health is pursuing dopamine. Your dopamine levels are partially genetically determined. Remember I mentioned that there's certain SNPs? I found out that I have one of the gene SNPs that means I would have a tendency perhaps to get an overdose of dopamine easily. In other words, it would be real easy, you know, especially if I tended towards some of those abusive things. Mm -hmm. I, I'm more likely, not as likely, to be on the low side of dopamine, maybe the excessive. Let's talk about it. That means you can take certain actions that maximize the dopamine levels 
Fortunately, the actions you take to keep your dopamine levels high are the same actions you must take to remain healthy. Mm -hmm. So they work hand in hand. That's right. Yeah. And there's strong connections between your 24-hour day and your night rhythm and your dopamine levels because, man, do we love this topic. And we are really driving it home, Nico, I think. I, th I think our listeners are really going to learn a lot about true health here. As we've been saying, your body has an eternal 24-hour clock that keeps track of which biological processes should be activated and deactivated. That's a nice uh, chart. I, I kind of dig this chart. So. I know. I don't know if, I hope people can see it. Yeah, um, Alice got zoomed in. Uh, phrased differently, that rhythm tells your body when certain hormones should be mobilized to keep you awake and when it's time for your body to wind down for the night. And this is a great chart. It is a great one. And interesting, you can tell what's going on with you at certain waking points. Yeah, look at 2100. That's 5 in the morning. Melatonin secretion starts. Mm-hmm. That's when the sun's starting to come up. Yeah. So huh, we'll talk about our natural circadian rhythm and how we can keep our happy hormones working for us. Be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The TFNN Memorial Day Tiger Dollar Special has just been announced. For one week only, we're doubling the bonuses that we normally give out with any Tiger Dollar purchase. Normally, when you purchase Tiger Dollars, you can receive a 10, 15, or 20% bonus with your purchase, but through Memorial Day only, we've doubled the bonuses to 20, 30, and even 40%. This is one of the best Tiger Dollar sales that we offer, and they only come around a couple times a year, so don't let it pass you by. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service, and they never expire. So whether you're already a subscriber and want to add savings to your monthly or yearly subscription, or you're thinking about signing up for anything in the future, now is a great time to get your Tiger Dollars. For all the details on the Memorial Day Tiger Dollar Special, visit the front page of TFNN.com before this deal ends May 28th. No matter where you're listening to TFNN programming, you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones, iPads, and Android devices, located in the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit tfnn.mobi in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call-in talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Welcome back to our last segment. We've been talking about uh, the dopamine levels and how this can make you happier. And Of course, we need to follow the 24-hour clock, which looks a little complicated unless you start really reading it. But uh, if you don't understand it, that's not a big deal. Uh, the important thing is you have to have uh, a good rhythm to uh, improve your dopamine levels. And disruption of your clock really is related to all kinds of different diseases like diabetes, uh, obesity, gut functions, immune problems, organ problems, heart and cancer. 
Well, that's exactly right, Nico. And the worse your 24-hour day and night cycle becomes, the poorer your dopamine levels get. You know, it, it's true, as we said again, really the key is that sunlight improves your dopamine. Yeah. And so if you're spending eight hours or more in the office each day, working overtime Saturdays, this is going to add up and, and really create a stress on maintaining ideal dopamine yeah, and when happiness. Your, when your eyes get exposed to ultraviolet light of the sun, dopamine is created in your eyes and in your brain. Who told you that? You did. That's right. And so the rule is don't let your job make it impossible to get your sunlight exposure. You know, there's so many people that work in jobs and they take a smoke break. Well, go say I'm going to take a sun break. There you go. And go get out there. A dopamine during break. Every, yeah, get outside every break that you have. And yeah. if you avoid the sun, your body is going to compensate by producing low dopamine levels and you're going to experience the side effects we talked about. Yes, and you if know, somebody asks you, uh, what are you doing today? You say, I'm getting more dopamine. That's right. I'm getting dope, man. <laughs> So next, there's meditation. Meditation gives you free dopamine. And uh, meditation is not fully free. Taking classes might be an initial investment or getting help with your meditation. But just finding time to be still and uh, know that you can um, stimulate good hormones. And if you look at other actions you can take to increase your dopamine levels, let's hit a few of them. Yeah, uh, taking you know. calculated risks is one of them. That's Isn't right. That something? And you know, that actually helps you. You know, you feel good if you do take a risk and it turns out well. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, then you're not doing too well with dopamine. And here's either. one of my favorites. Lose weight. That's you right. know, if you feel like you're carrying a few extra pounds, your dopamine levels are, you know, probably going to be a little lower. And listen to some great music. Have you ever put on some great music? and it takes you back to a memory that makes you feel happy. I think that's amazing. That's really a great Now here's picture. one you normally wouldn't think, that drinking coffee is especially recommended in the early morning because it stays in your system for a very long time. Human perception generally assumes that the effect of coffee only lasts a few hours. Coffee affects your day and night rhythm for up to 15 hours. Well, that has a double-edged sword. Yeah, and, you so know, you don't I, drink it in the evening. I think I sent you a link because, you know, uh, someone that I pay attention to is Jason Kristoff. He's very prolific yeah. on Facebook, mm -hmm. and he's a real big anti-coffee person, and he references a, a book, well-researched book. But, again, can be good, can be bad. But, you know, if it's disrupting your cycle, it's probably not working for you and there's some of us that don't metabolize coffee as well right. and it can lead so to here's excess. a few more things having a purpose in life and achieving your goals will raise your dopamine cold exposure well, so this these, is why this, so many of us in the in the uh, mitochondriac field are using cold yeah. cold therapy sure. yeah it's light so thermogenesis yeah. exactly sex of course uh when we have sex uh it raises your dopamine fasting can do this also that interesting fasting for long periods of time does not seek to improve it, but it's uh, a short, you know, short fasting, so yeah. intermittent fasting. Exercise, but only if you're not chronically stressed. That's exactly right. If you are chronically stressed, exercise is not Here your is friend. another thing. Eating raw meat or raw seafood will increase your This dopamine. is amazing because I, I have been doing that more, and I believe that I feel a different difference. When I, I, I told you I love steak tartare yeah. and like oysters. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and uh, include some bone broth, gelatin, or uh, call it, you know, if you go through this list, this, this is living a primal lifestyle, folks. This is what we've been talking about all the time. So not only is it your health that we're concerned about, it, but it's your happiness, too. And they kind of go hand in hand here. And that, what's so amazing about everything we've talked about, guys, is that building dopamine in your brain makes you both happy and healthy. And probably successful, too, because happy people are That's successful. What, and exactly, and I love that point. Yeah. So people who have better health report higher happiness quotients. And the reverse is also true. So planning for your health is just as important as planning for your financial future. They go hand in hand. And uh, this was a great subject. I hope you guys have a great day. Go get some dopamine, folks. That's right. I'll see, see you next later. time. Bye-bye. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls.
Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.